My name is Pat Faranga, and I'm the president of Growing Without Schooling, John Holt Associates. Uh, we have a website, uh, www.johnholtgws.com, and I've been carrying on John's work uh, since he passed away in 1985. I published the magazine that he started in 1977 uh, called Growing Without Schooling, as he tried to support people who wanted to take their children out of school and teach them in their homes and their local communities instead. Back then, uh, I came to work for him in 1981, and back then John said there were maybe 25,000 children being taught at home then. Now, in 2015, the federal government estimates over two and a half million children being taught at home. So it's been slow, but very steady growth, very encouraging. And it's done by families. Um, and this was foreign to me. In fact, when I started work at Holt Associates, I was going to be a teacher. But when I started work there, John asked me why I wanted to be a teacher. I said, because I like to work with children. And he said, oh, no, Pat, you got it all wrong. You're not going to work with children as a teacher. You're going to work on children. And with that, I started to challenge him and discuss things with him and learned that uh, his experiences as a fifth grade teacher in private schools throughout Colorado and Massachusetts, teaching some of the best and the brightest, resulted him in him saying that school is just this giant charade of learning, um, where the, te the kids f pretend that they know the answers and they pass a test, and the teachers pretend the kids know it because they pass the test, but if you gave them the same test a week later, they would fail it. John wanted to know what that was about, and he spent the better part of the 60s. Uh, he actually became very famous in his own right, uh, trying to reform schools. And it didn't work. And then in the early 70s, he met Ivan Illich, who had written a book called Deschooling Society. And John thought, well, it's a good idea, but how could that happen? And he just started thinking about other options and exploring other options. And homeschooling kept coming up as the one thing that needs, that, that can be changed. Because schools, there was too much money, too much testing, too little play in schools back in the 70s when Holt was writing this. He was writing about it. This is well documented. And he's not the only one. Now in 2015, there is no more recess. We have school extending to second, to two-year-olds, to 18-year-olds. It just keeps getting bigger and more expensive. And we keep saying kids don't learn more. So let's do something different. And John came up with the word unschooling to describe that. Because he didn't like the word homeschooling. Homeschooling makes it seem like you do school at home. For John, unschooling means it doesn't have to look like school and it doesn't have to take place at home. And that has you know, been a joyful experience for me to learn because I was one of those kids who did well in school but <laughs> forgot everything the minute I left it, even though I had great grades. And I think that's true for so many of us. And I wanted to really find more authentic learning. And I was idealistic, thought I could change schools uh, by working within the system and so on. Holt and Illich and George Dennison and James Herndon and some of the other people who worked in the schools and wrote books about them changed my opinions on that. And they, they really led me to, to believe that you know, changing families and society is much more important. Finding a place for children in the world right now as children, not as little automatons that we control until they're 18 and then say, OK, now you can go out into the world. John wanted children to be involved in the world as soon as they wanted to, as much as they could, up to their abilities, of course. And that's what uh, homeschooling and unschooling in particular is all about. You're not sitting down with a curriculum in your home, uh, running your kids through lessons. Instead, you're doing activities. You're, you're going to museums if, if that's, you're, you're, you're that type of family. And other families living in rural areas would use you know, nature and in, uh, in the chores of daily life to get the, life, you know, the farm going. Um, the Colfaxes are probably the most famous example of this um, back in the 80s. Grant Colfax was raised on a dairy goat farm in Northern California. And uh, he'd written a bunch of articles about raising dairy goats and helped his family, bu family business grow. And when he applied to Harvard Medical School, I mean Harvard undergrad, they said uh, they accepted him because of the am amazing amount of work he'd done. He'd already been published <laughs> articles about dairy goats when he was 14. All of this without ever setting foot inside a classroom. To make a long story short, Grant is now the heads of the AIDS Research uh, Division for the federal government. Um, and this is someone who never set foot in the school until he went to college. So there are many, many different ways to learn, but you would never guess that from the way our schools are structured. And um, unschooling is a great way to 
at least get your, if your children can't put up with school anymore, consider taking them out or putting them in an alternative school. Um, but homeschooling is the legal term that, that you would do. You, you don't apply to unschool in any state. You apply to homeschool. But unschooling is the philosophy that guides your, your homeschool. And um, once you get that, you know, you say, I'm going to homeschool, it's your right. Every parent has a right. Homeschooling is not illegal anywhere. And you do not need to be a certified teacher to homeschool your child in any state. Um, some states and some state support groups will give you help you know, as you, if you need it. And uh, there's a lot of local support for uh, homeschooling and unschooling. But the main thing is, again, building on Holt's observations and others' observations of how children learn. Children are social animals. They learn, they're not animals, by the way, they're people, <laughs> they're young people. And they, uh, they learn by doing, by talking, by participating with each other. So Gadamitra's work is the most recent example that proves this, but there are many, many examples throughout the education, throughout history. Because we have to remember, school is a product of the industrial age. From 1850 to now, we've been stuck with compulsory schools. They didn't exist. In fact, there have been societies, Periclean Greece, Elizabethan England, America before the Revolution, no compulsory schools anywhere. Yet, those societies had incredible, incredible cultural, scientific, and artistic achievements. It is possible, but we're sold a bill of goods that the only way we can learn is by being taught by certified people and institutions that take up more and more of our time and money and turn out neurotic children who are very upset and can't wait to get out of school. So. Unschooling is a great way to uh, break that spell. And uh, as I said earlier, it's your right to do it for six weeks, six months, forever. If you need, if you're, I know they'll say, oh, but your child will miss so-and-so. They'll, they'll miss this class. They're going to you know, miss this lesson. It's a key lesson in geometry. So what? They can pick it up later. And they often do. Our, my, one of my daughters uh, hated math, didn't take any math. I mean, she took math because my wife insisted, but she kept failing, in the, but when she finally wanted to take a psychology course in community college, uh, she was only 14, by the way. It's another way that you know homeschoolers are able to homeschool through high school, because high schools ban homeschoolers from a lot of their extracurriculars and stuff, but the community colleges welcome them. And, um, well, and that's changing now a little bit now, because everything is getting tighter, but they, they, did, they do allow homeschoolers to, to come in. And they taught my daughter all the math. She, it was called Fundamentals of Math. It was a six-month course, you know, two semesters. And in that six months, she learned all the math at the age of 14 that she had missed until then. And she was in there with a bunch of high school graduates who were trying to get into community college, too. They needed the fundamentals of math. We spend so much time in school parceling out knowledge when it can be learned so much quicker when there's a need and an interest on the child's part, on the learner's part. And we forget that all the time in school. In fact, now it's to the point where even the teachers are feeling it. The teachers are being told how to t teach and graded just like the students are. You know, and you know, the strange logic of what's good for the goose is good for the gander has now resulted in teachers screaming their lungs out that they hate being evaluated this way. And I don't blame them. Neither should a child. You know, we are here to uh, change society, um, or so we claim with school. But it seems that all the school does is reproduce society's inequalities. And this was noted by Illich and by Holt and by Paul Goodman back in the 50s. Um, and we see it. I, they were right. And it's here. I hope that people will turn to unschooling and homeschooling or any sort of alternative school to opt out of the system to change it. Because the only way the system will change is by people leaving it, not working within it. We need a, a new system, not the current system.